Ryan, our hero from the hatchet, Brian Winter, and the river is back. And this time, well, he's going back again. What led leads him to him? Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today I have this awesome, epic, Brian book. Brian's Return of Hatchet Adventure as usual by Gary Paulson, and well, let's get right on to it. Brian, well, he's trying to fit into normal life. He's trying to be with his friends and be all normal and stuff. But one day, this kid who basically attacked Brian and his to-be girlfriend. What happens is that, well, Brian, he's usually lost in a daydream of going to woods, so he doesn't really notice anything. Meanwhile, Susan, a very popular girl in school, wants to go out with him, and they were ro walking into a restaurant together, and what would happen was a football player, who was jealous of Brian, decided to punch the door against Susan and Brian which got Susan down and she twisted her ankle and a friend of Susan had a bloody nose or something like that. And what happened was that Brian was shocked out of his little daydream about the woods and suddenly he wasn't Brian anymore. He was the boy who had survived in the woods because of wit and his quick action. He thought about the moose, the bear, and all the dangers he had faced. He immediately knew that he needed to neutralize his enemy, and he became some sort of animal. With his instinct, he got the boy down, and he was beaten senseless. And the police, obviously because the boy was beaten senseless, thought Brian was the bad guy, and they sent him to a counselor. Now, the counselor was actually a really nice guy, and he, hearing Brian's story, and how Brian described the beautiful woods, how terrible, but how beautiful it was, he well knew that there was nothing wrong with Brian, that there's no charge, and he just wanted to hear about Brian's story from tomorrow. And so Brian keep coming back to the counselor to talk about his experience in the woods. And the counselor was blind, and hearing all these wonderful details about the sunshine, but about, for example, moose, fish hunting, eating, all that. It was so beautiful, and the council loved it. And by the time that Brian was keeps, kept saying it in the last few days of school, our dear counselor said that Brian needed to return. It was time. And Brian, in, a, in his little daydream, daydream, had been compiling a list of things that he would take with him when he finally returned. A bow and arrow, a lot of arrows, a bow, a hatchet, a hunting knife, some salt, and a couple cooking pans, and a one-man tent. That is what he thought of the list. He knew that there's no point in going back in the wild if he had everything. Mosquito repellent, for example, or guns. He felt like that he should go as minimalistic as possible. And so, except for the way to make a fire, which is lighter, and of course, his pots and pans and his tent, mm, yeah, those were the only things that he really went modern, and the rest of the things he went medieval. It's his bow, and of course his knife, and his trusty hatchet. Of course, it's not the original one, the one that he took with him in the wild, but, you know, it's a hatchet. A hatchet's a hatchet. And Brian one time sees this finally Brian goes back on bush so there Brian basically lives his life and he sees this deer and he decided that he really didn't need it and he was about to shoot it but he didn't and when he went back to camp he met this man an old man who had the forest in, within him and who thought of the forest as the hole, as his home. And Brian has a little deja vu kind of feeling. The feeling that this man, this old man, was Brian's future. Feeling the woods and living in the wild. And Brian is told that when he talks about that deer, that that deer is his medicine deer. And that that deer would help him through his troubles. And Brian, 
in the very last chapter, fights a bear, but he survives quite easily. Well, not fight a bear. Basically, a bear was attacking him, and he drew his bow, and they were like, the bear was like this, Brian was like this, and they basically kept that little, little standoff, I guess, Mexican style standoff for a little bit, and the bear retreated. And he didn't have to kill it. And that's when the woods truly returned to Brian. All the danger, all the horrible stuff, but also the beautiful stuff. And of the cool, clean air. And that is the end of this book. Of course, bro, ne the next book, Brian's Hunt. I actually read that one because it was like in a random library in the classroom when I was in elementary school. And I basically just read it and it was epic. I did not know it was the final book in the series. And it kind of ruined the experience for me, not really, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. It is, of course, a great book, a survival book, something that you wouldn't see on TV. Reality TV shows? No, they just have all their cool equipment and tech and all that. But Brian does it the old way. The bow and arrow, a tent, and the ability to get food, but with no, you know, guns and water makers and GPS trackers? No, he doesn't carry any of that. He is truly an animal boy, a boy with the woods in him.